Barry, in um, trying to discern the nature of existence and reality, one of the questions I like to pose to myself and my friends is what exists? I mean, we know all this stuff exists, mm -hmm. oceans and beautiful rocks and everything. Mm -hmm. But it, at its most fundamental character, uh, at the most fundamental level, where when you get whatever categories you have, you can't reduce one, to, you can't explain one in terms of the other. What, what do you get down to absolute bedrock? And you've talked about and you've really focused on what is a law? What, is it, what, what does it mean to say there's a law of physics? And, uh, and so is that, if you would characterize what exists, would laws, natural laws, be part of your, one of your, one of your final categories? No. So, yes, you're right. I mean, in, in um, philosophy, philosophers have always been interested in, in fact, this could even be their job description, huh. tell us what are the fundamental kinds of things that exist and tell us what does exist. Although I find that when I ask my friends those questions, I lose my friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this, this is a, 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 the yeah. central to philosophy. So about laws, I am very interested in what are laws of physics. There are fundamental laws of physics. These are the basic laws of physics. But whether they're metaphysically fundamental, whether they're part of the fundamental, we might say, bedrocks of existence, that is a question. There are two kinds of views about that that basically have been developed over time. One is the view that they are fundamental at, in the bedrocks of existence, and the other is the view that they're not. The, the first view we might call a very metaphysical view and goes back to the origins of the concept of laws in the 17th century, 16th and 17th century, and particularly in Descartes, who wrote a book that he didn't publish in his lifetime, in which he laid out the idea, the book was called Le Monde, and he laid out the idea that it was the job of the sciences to find laws. And in fact, physics particularly, but other sciences too, have taken on this job since then. And this, of course, made a job for philosophers to find uh -huh. out what laws are. Mm. So physicists were finding out what the laws are, philosophers to find out what laws are. One view, the view that Descartes seemed to have, is that the notion of law had a sort of theological origin, that what um, makes things happen in the world ultimately is due to God really moving things around, and that the laws describe how gods will move things around. So there was this descriptive aspect, but also this idea of there being some sort of a agency within nature. <clears throat> this was a good idea for Descartes for a couple of reasons. One is it allowed science to develop a little bit independently of theology, even though it had a theological origin, because they could say that in investigating the laws, we're investigating mm -hmm. God's the way God operates in the world, and that this was a thing that they could do independently of theology. Um, uh, over the years, as scientists developed and found real laws, Descartes himself, he came up with a few examples which were not fundamental laws, but um, laws of optics and so on that are now more or less right. But he didn't come up with any really fundamental laws or candidates for fundamental laws. But Newton did, somewhat after Descartes. And over time, Newton also had a view about laws that connected it with theology. But over time, the theological part sort of fell out. And mm. what stayed in was a kind of descriptive aspect, that laws described patterns in the world, particularly patterns that were amenable to mathematical expression. So there's a whole other idea about laws, which say that laws themselves don't have any power to make things happen. Laws just describe what actually does happen. This view became associated with the philosopher David Hume, and in modern times, contemporary times, with the philosopher David Lewis, who was a big influence on me. So the two views are a metaphysical view that says that laws are in some way part of the fundamental ontology, in addition to space and time and the material contents of space and time. There are also laws, and laws make things happen. And then there's the view that there's just the material contents of space and time, and laws are just very special, interesting mathematical descriptions of patterns which are themselves simple and highly informative and fit together in a big system. That's the view that David Lewis developed and the view that I've also developed in my own work. And in that case, it, it, it is not part of the fundamental bedrock of reality. That's it's correct. It's our construct or our best fit to what there is there. 
That's exactly right. Now, for some people, that's not realist enough for them. Right. And for other people, it is just realist enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that some people would say, it depends how far you go, it's an anti-realist position. It's, it's, almost, it's almost a skeptical position. I think it's good to be anti-realist about the things that don't exist <laughs> and realist about the things that do exist. Right. Um, so you're saying that the, those kinds of laws don't, in fact, exist. Yes, my puzzle about them is I, without God pushing things around, yeah. and I don't really understand how that would work anyway, I don't really understand how these items, laws, could operate to make things happen. I don't understand that connection. It isn't causation, because causation is not something that's in the fundamental bedrock either. And this was an observation that you made and that Russell made much later, looking at the fundamental laws of physics. Russell looked at them and said, well, in the fundamental laws of physics, we don't find the notion of causation. In fact, a famous remark that he made was that the laws of the causation is like the British monarchy, that philosophers and scientists keep talking about it only because they think like the British monarchy. Erroneously, they think that it causes no harm, <laughs> but he thought it did cause a lot of harm. Both causation as a philosophy and the British and monarchy. The British monarchy, yes. monarchy yeah. Uh, so, at the bedrock of reality, then, if you're not having laws there, what do you have left? What I have is space-time, yeah. although I might even think that space and time themselves are constructs, and then I have the wave function of the universe. The, that, I think, is the stuff of the universe, is what's described by mecha quantum mechanics as a kind of wave function. And maybe there's something more, maybe there are fields also in addition to that. Wave function itself is a kind of a field. Um, and this is this stuff, and it has a certain structure, and it has certain values over, if we, let's take space and time for granted right now, it has certain values throughout all of space and time. And out of these values that they has, uh, have out of space and time, the laws are constructed, as you put it. That's yeah. a good way to put it. Yeah. Um, and um, by your uh, taking what I would call a minimalist position, uh, do you feel that these uh, fields and particles that, and uh, products of quantum uh, mechanics and quantum physics, uh, you're comfortable with that being the fundamental part of reality and that's all you, that's all you got? Um, I'm never comfortable. <laughs> you know, if a philosopher feels that he's comfortable, he ought to change and <laughs> do something else. But, so I'm not comfortable with that. And in fact, the view that I have about it is a bit more complex than I've expressed so far. I actually think the question about what there is at the most fundamental level is a question that we don't clearly understand well enough yet, and that there are different answers, which in a way can be all reasons can be given for different kinds of answers. So one might look at the fundamental properties, what the philosopher David Lewis called natural quantities or properties, look at them and say, well, what they really are are the sort of things which by their very nature connect up with other properties in a lawful way. That wasn't Lewis's view, but one might have that view. Or one might say that by their very nature, they're not involved in laws at all. Laws are just constructed out of the patterns of these. I think that these two views can both be developed in reasonable ways. And although they seem like they contradict each other, it might be at the end of the day, we have to just learn to live with both these views and the idea that they're just two ways of describing the universe, neither one of which wins out over the other one.